Woo, with a title like that, you must think this is clickbait. Well, it's not. Literally everyone around you, yourselves included, are killing the ham bands. And we're going to talk about how to fix it today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. So what is this killer of the amateur radio bands and how are we doing it to ourselves? The killer is radio frequency interference, RFI. And let me demonstrate it. One of the loudest RFI devices in my home is actually this refrigerator. This is an LG refrigerator and boy oh boy does it throw out a lot of RFI. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the radio. You get major hash here there's a center frequency kind of center frequency from that switch mode power supply switching back and forth and back and forth and as the devices are becoming more efficient the faster they switch back and forth the more efficiency they have but they also put up more rfi this my refrigerator is probably my worst device that i own as far as this hash it's just incredibly bad and so for those of you that have thought the bands were dead or the bands were bad on any given day it's more often likely that you're dealing with RFI in your shack than the bands are not actually having anything go on. The bands always have activity. There's always something going on, depending on the day-night cycle and which particular band is active. But there's generally always something on the bands. You just need to necessarily do the work to prepare your shack to receive those lower powered signals. So I'm gonna break this all down in the sense of how to fix this problem in the investigation the attack or the hunt, and then the defense. So you gotta do the investigation first, and good news, the investigation is easy, although you probably need to get your family out of the house because they're not gonna be happy if you shut the power off. But you're gonna need to kill all the power in your house at the breaker, shut it all off. And then, depending on if it's day or night, with the antennas that you have, the bands you can operate, go on those bands and see if your ambient noise floor is much lower than it normally is when everything's turned on in your house. If it's lower, that means the noise that's choking your radio potentially is coming from inside your home by the devices you own. If you know you have a problem, the hunt begins. And you can basically systematically find the devices that are creating the noise by going circuit breaker by circuit breaker and turning them on. And when you find a circuit breaker that has a higher noise floor, the noise bumps up, you know somewhere on that circuit is a device that's creating RFI that's choking your system. So I shut off the power to my house and look, that hashy signal's all gone. So now we've got to figure out where it's coming from. So you found a circuit in your home that has a noise producer. Start going plug by plug and unplugging and replugging things in until you know basically what device is causing the RFI. Once you know which device it is, then you can add that to the defense list. And we'll talk about that later in the video. Well, we've got the noise back, so now we just have to hunt it down. I think I might know where it's at. Let's see if my first assumption is correct. No. So that means it's the Wi-Fi. Oh, wait. There it is. It's gone. Ha-ha. So it's something in my computer system that I set up recently. So we've got this uh, drumming sound. Boo 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 boo. It's right here and it's repeated. You hear it? I've got it on my shortwave. And this is only going to pick up the local interference. So you can hear it only on the mic when I hold it to my. There's like a tone to it, right? So this actually should be easy to find if we just walk around the house. Let's go see. So three bars. Getting more pronounced, four bars. Now it's totally easy to hear. It's the TV. Let's see what happens when we turn it off. Gone. Oh. My bad. So now that you've found all the nasty RFI devices and hopefully quarantined them somewhere, you can begin the defense of your shack. And it comes in two forms. The first is try to eliminate the devices that create the RFI 
or squelch or attenuate the RFI they create down as much as you can. And then the second portion of this is add capability to your radio shack at the antenna, at the radio itself, via various different means that we're going to cover that will keep it safe and keep the RFI low. So the easiest way to tame a noisy device is just to simply get rid of it. If you can get a power supply or a power adapter that can power the device without using the offending wall wart, great, get rid of it. There's your biggest problem solved. And in fact, once you know that it's a really noisy device and you're gonna throw it away, snip the lead on it so it can't get plugged in by your neighbors or something like that. Get it gone completely. But if you can't get rid of it, the next thing you need to do is attenuate that noise. And the way I've been doing it is using toroid cores and snap-on ferrite beads. I'm not affiliated with Palomar Engineers, but I support their products that they make. I've used them. I feel that they're of a large enough capability. They're not those tiny little ones that you can buy on Amazon. They're big beefy toroids and, and ferrites. They've been very effective in attenuating noise in different devices that I have, and I also deploy it on my shack. So going back and talking about my refrigerator for a minute, that is the noisiest thing I have in my house. And you saw the noise floor just from that one device peaks way up. And the only way I was able to take that noise down to an appreciable level is wrapping the power cord through a toroid core about five times, at least five times. If you can get more, that's great, but that's about the length I have to still get behind it and you know do what I gotta do. I also added toroid cores to my power and my coax on my radio, my 7300. And then every cable that goes into the back of that radio has a snap-on ferrite bead with multiple wraps of the cord around the ferrite bead before I snapped it closed. This helps a ton and brought my noise down significantly and is the reason why I think that I receive so well even though I live in a really, really noisy suburb. So it's the least glamorous job, but you, you got to do it if you want to get your, your noise floor down so you can use the radio appropriately. So I attempted to use a snap-on ferrite, didn't work, so we're going to try a couple wraps with the toroid core, if I can, because the cable's not really that long. Okay, let's see if three turns did it. There's some right there, still picking it up. So we got three turns through the center of the toroid. One more will probably knock it out, but I don't know that I have the space necessary to do it. Uh, let's try and see. So sadly, about what I expected, I don't have the space, I don't have the length of cable long enough to be able to wrap a couple extra turns. That's okay, that's a, a livable amount of hash, but now we know exactly where the problem is so I can buy a longer power cord on Amazon or whatever and just loop it a couple more times and that will effectively nullify the noise. Great, we have been successful. So while on my illustrious journey, check out what I found out. Let me plug the dryer back in. Hang on to your butts. Look at all this noise that it picked up. Look at that. When the dryer's not spinning, look at the noise that it puts out. That took it up to an S3. I didn't even know this before. This moment, I didn't even realize this. Let me turn it off again. Wow! That is insane. So we're going to wrap a toroid core around that power cord too at the base and see if we can knock that down as well. So I wrapped a toroid core five times through the power and we're still at an S3 noise floor. We took it down one S unit by five wraps. That is putting out an insane amount of RFI. So for the time being, I'm gonna leave it unplugged. I'm gonna go online and figure out what the solution is. But man, keep, out, keep an eye out for stuff like that. I didn't even realize that. I just thought 40 was a little noisy. Three S units of noise. And it was even higher than that before I put the Torrid core on. Wow. So the last step in this journey to get the dryer into uh, noise <laughs> compliance is to add this AC line filter that's gonna live in this project box. I've gone ahead and cut two leads of a, an extension cord so that we can carry that ground over from the load or line side. Sorry, I got that backwards. The line side and then the load is gonna be the appliance. So let's fab this up and see if it works. So looking at the schematic here, top to bottom, I'm assuming this is the positive going to negative grounds right there. So black being the hotline, white is the return. 
Uh, we're going to put the black here on the line, white there, and we'll match the same here. And then we'll test it, of course, with the volt ohm meter so that we know <laughs> we're not going to screw something up. Now we'll just repeat what we did on the other side, and we will test it and make sure we're not going to fry anything up. I don't want to let the smoke out of a, a dryer. That seems like it would be smoky and wifey matty. So securing it, I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. I use this a lot. Um, it's going to go underneath this guy and it's going to stick up from the bottom and then we'll cinch it down and we'll test it out. So with some appliance, I'll, I'll test it out on my desk first to make sure we're not screwing something up and then we'll go to the dryer. All right, so a little bit of ambient noise on the bands, um, S1, S2, but you can see we took out almost everything. Everything you're seeing is some kind of signal, a voice signal. So that was a fun little adventure that I put myself on. I thought I had most everything choked down around my home regarding RFI, and I found out I've got some new issues, like that dryer, for instance. Well, I didn't expect that. So anyway, it's good from time to time to do this, shut the power down, do a check with a shortwave radio. I'm using the C-Crane Skywave single sideband, but just about anything that can do shortwave is gonna work. Single sideband might work a little bit better because you're gonna replicate exactly what the radio is seeing and hearing. So big shout out to Palomar Engineers. I've been a fan of their products for a long time. I've talked to the owner a few times, last time being the Ham Jam in San Diego last year, uh, where we sp spoke about RFI in my shack, which led me down this rabbit hole of finding and choking out as much devices as I can. Palomar Engineer, not affiliated with me. I don't do any work with them. I purchase everything on my own, but they are nice enough to offer all of you a discount. HRCC73 at checkout will get you a discount on the products that they have on their website. Now also, it's not just about RFI suppression to, like products that you can buy. They have a whole series of pamphlets and how-to brochures that you can download to help you track down items that are creating RFI in and around your shack if this video wasn't enough help. Also, of course, comment below and I can help you as much as I can. One area that I didn't talk about, which is for a future video, is AC grounding. You do need to do an appropriate AC ground for all your equipment and you need to follow specs and operating requirements within your city, county, and state. So make sure you're doing all of that. This is gonna be stuff that you're gonna need to like suppress devices that are already working in your system. A big portion of helping you out is going to be getting on an AC ground, an appropriate ground, and of course that ground needs to be done correctly. So we'll save that for another time. The first today was once you have a working station and you got all that noise, how do you try and knock that down? And we walked through some of the items here to do it. So if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It helps out the YouTube algorithm getting this type of content in front of other people. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. Please subscribe if you have not because I live stream every Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'll talk to you later. See ya.